My name is Diego Maranen, and in this presentation, I'll be discussing the power of interactive digital media in the realm of online learning. These dynamic tools are reshaping the landscape of education and creating engaging, immersive learning experiences for students. Over the past few decades, we've witnessed a remarkable evolution in online learning. From static, text-heavy platforms, we've moved towards dynamic and interactive digital experiences. This evolution has been driven by the recognition that education is not a one-size-fits-all endeavor. Each learner is unique, and our tool should reflect and celebrate the diversity. This is where interactive digital media can play an important role. Today, we'll explore how these interactive elements are enriching online learning environments and enhancing educational outcomes. Engagement lies at the heart of effective learning. Think about it. When was the last time you were truly absorbed in a task? It's during those moments that learning becomes natural and enjoyable. Interactive digital media takes this principle to the next level by creating environments that captivate attention, encourage participation, and foster active learning. To begin, you can classify digital media in different ways. One of the most common ways to classify digital media is by their format, such as text, graphic, audio, video, animation, and so on. You might also already be familiar with Diana Lauriard's classification of media types and how they contribute to effective educational experiences. Lauriard, a prominent educationalist, developed a classification system to categorize media based on their distinct functions in the learning process. The narrative media type focuses on storytelling presenting information in a cohesive and compelling manner. With narrative media, though, information flows in only one direction, from the learning material to the user. Learners are expected to assimilate information presented to them. With interactive media, on the other hand, learners engage in hands-on activities and interactive tasks, applying theoretical knowledge in practical scenarios. This media type promotes active learning and skill development. Adaptive learning media adjusts to the individual needs of learners, tailoring content and activities based on their progress and performance. This personalization enhances the learning experience. Communicative collaboration media emphasize collaborative learning, where students work together on projects, share ideas, and collectively contribute to the learning environment. Finally, when using productive media, Learners engage in repetitive and deliberate practice to reinforce skills and concepts. Productive practice also enables students to express their understanding of a subject by allowing them to generate or construct their own knowledge products. However, for the remainder of today's presentation, when I talk about interactive digital media, you will see that all of Lauriard's media types, except for the narrative kind, actually feature some kind of interactivity. So when we talk about interactive media, it doesn't mean it only in the sense of Lauriard's interactive media type. Instead, interactive digital media refers to any form of digital content that allows users, or in this case, students, to actively engage, manipulate, and participate in the learning process. Let's look at interactive digital media not by the media format or media type, but based on the specific learning tasks that they afford. From simulations and virtual reality to collaborative platforms and adaptive learning systems, the possibilities are extensive. These tools are not just about making learning fun, they're also about making it effective, personalized, and meaningful. These are some of the different types of interactions that interactive digital media can create. We take a look at each of these in the following slides, and note that some examples afford multiple kinds of interactions at once. One of the simplest and most familiar interaction types is navigation. Users move seamlessly through digital content using navigation tools to access different sections or elements. Clickable tables of content, breadcrumb trails, and tabs are all examples that allow digital content to be navigable. Interactive digital media can also enable users to investigate data or virtual environments, exploring various elements and uncovering information as they move. For example, 
This UP Open University virtual tour and this Mandelbrot set explorer are both examples of interactive media that afford exploration. In organizational interactions, users engage in sorting and arranging information, organizing data based on specific criteria or preferences. In this example from one of the courses that I teach, an interactive table allows students to sort, group, and filter various methods for doing user experience research. On the other hand, this example from Brilliant.com shows how the users can drag and drop different elements into different slots in order to solve a problem. In temporal interactions, users have control over the time-based aspects of the content, manipulating the speed or directions of timelines or animations. So for example, YouTube videos by default allow playback at different speeds, from half the speed to twice the speed. In transformation interactions, users can transform or manipulate visual elements, altering appearance, size, or orientation for different perspectives. Perlego.com's online reader, for example, allows users to customize visual elements such as the size and color of text to make their eBooks more readable. Users can engage in activities involving comparisons of different sets of information in order to identify patterns or differences. In the example on the left, an interactive timeline allows users to see easily see changes across the years in fertility rate when plotted against life expectancy. In the example on the right, software can be used to compare the similarities and differences between lines of code. In customization interactions, users personalize their experience by customizing interfaces, choosing preferences, themes, or settings. We've actually seen an example of customization with the Perlego interface and with YouTube's playback speed settings. An additional example of customization is how YouTube allows users to display closed captioning in different languages if they are available. In annotation interactions, users add notes, comments, or annotations to the content. This include interactions such as marking up documents, annotating images, or leaving feedback on a forum. Collaborative online authoring tools such as Google Docs allow these kinds of annotations. In collaborative interactions, users can work together in a shared digital space, collaborating on tasks, sharing information, and communicating in real time. Wikis, such as Moodle's Wiki activity, and real-time chat platforms, such as Discord, are just two of the many tools available for collaboration. In adaptive interactions, the interactive media adapts to user behavior, dynamically adjusting content, difficulty levels, or presentation styles. So for example, the language learning platform Duolingo adjusts the difficulty of succeeding lessons based on how well the learner does on previous lessons. In decision-making interactions, users make choices that influence the progression of the narrative or the outcome of the interactive experience. So for example, you could use a Google form to create a choose-your-own-adventure kind of experience. In feedback interactions, users receive real-time feedback based on their actions, helping them understand consequences and guiding them through. For example, H5P content allows you to create interactive videos that can be used to test learners' understanding of the video content as it plays. In narrative interactions, Users play an active role in shaping the narrative or storyline, making decisions that impact the direction and outcome. The story authoring tool, Twine, allows users to create multi-layered branching storylines, for example. Finally, in simulation interactions, users engage in simulated experiences that mimic real-world scenarios, providing a safe and controlled environment. You can use an online simulator to simulate working, for example, with a computer, or a microcomputer, such as Arduino or Microbit, without having an actual physical microcomputer at hand. There are many reasons why you might want to use interactive digital media in your educational content. These include providing engagement and motivation, active learning, personalized learning, real-world simulations, immediate feedback, collaboration and communication, accessibility, resource diversity, problem-solving skills, flexibility and convenience, 
data analytics, and global learning opportunities. If you are designing or assessing the use of interactive digital media in an educational setting, the interactions that you provide should match the learning outcomes that you wish to achieve. In conclusion, the power of interactive digital media in education is undeniable. As we navigate the ever-evolving landscape of learning, these tools offer a gateway to engagement, personalization, and dynamic exploration. By embracing interactive media, we empower students to actively participate in their educational journey, fostering a love for learning that extends beyond traditional boundaries. The richness of experiences created through interactive digital media opens new possibilities for collaboration, creativity, and skill development. So let's continue to leverage these tools to shape a future where education is not just a transmission of knowledge, but an immersive and interactive adventure.